everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and we are back again today to talk about the critically acclaimed Emmy-nominated, it's not, Tony-nominated, it's also not, Oscar-nominated, none of those things, but they do have a reality TV award, the 1,000 Pound Sisters starring Amy and Tammy Slayton and their various siblings and cast of characters. Now, I'm gonna leave some timestamps because I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I haven't posted about the 1,000 Pound Sisters in a bit, and I'm also gonna cover two episodes in this video, so I'll leave some timestamps in case you wanna jump around and skip over things and whoever, whatever, okay? I, I want to make this as easy and convenient as I can for you, the folks who love to hear me talk about the 1,000 Pound Sisters. So I'll try to keep this first part short, but I did notice a lot of people <laughs> asking, Zach, are you going to post about the 1,000 Pound Sisters? When are you going to post about the 1,000 Pound Sisters? Did you stop covering them? Which I think are all fair questions because last year I did totally stop covering the 1,000 Pound Best Friends and I kind of just didn't say anything about it because I just kind of got tired of the show. But I'm not tired of the 1,000 Pound Sisters, so that's not what happened here. I did make a community tab post, but I probably should have posted something a little bit sooner. And I did talk about it a little bit on Twitch, but I know not everybody follows me on Twitch. So my apologies if you were confused or looking for an update on the 1000 Pound Sisters from me. The main reason that I have not posted about them in a couple weeks is that on the second episode, I got a copyright claim from TLC. Now, I've been covering the 1000 Pound Sisters on my channel since it literally debuted. And in the first season, I was really nervous to post a lot of clips from the show itself because I wasn't really sure how that worked with copyright. And I just assumed that no matter what, if I included a clip, I would get struck and I wouldn't be able to have my channel. But I think it was somewhere in the second season that I was like, no, we're gonna try to include some clips and just see what I can get away with. Like, what, what I can do because I really did believe that like including a very short clip from the show was transformative content. And so I would say I think since season two, I would have to actually go back and rewatch my own videos, but I think since season two, I've been including clips and for the most part have never had any issues. What I will say though is towards the end of the last season, TLC did start to do copyright claims on my channel. And a claim is different from a strike. You might be familiar with people getting copyright strikes. A strike is something that like literally immediately removes your video and like goes against your, your channel. And I don't really know what a company has to do to make a strike, but a claim is essentially like TLC saying, hey bestie, we're gonna take all the money that you're gonna make from this show because you use clips from our show on it. Those claims started coming in every so often during the fourth season. And I honestly truly resolved them very quickly. I went through YouTube's claim process, said it was fair use, explained why it was fair use, and TLC and Discovery like almost immediately every time would be like, okay, we see what you did here. Because I think honestly what happens is that these clips just get auto-detected by like the algorithm or the robot or whatever it is that YouTube uses to match it up against any kind of copywritten content. And because of that, whenever I come in and say, hey, it's fair use, I use like 10 seconds of your show in that clip that you you caught and and it was just for me to provide commentary on, then TLC has typically released their claims and let me go on with my life. In this case, that's not what happened. Uh, the, the first claim that they made, I, I appealed it and it was a little bit different. I just had one question to answer and I answered the question as thorough as I could to be like, hey besties, what we do over here is just like show our love and appreciation for the show, I've created a community where we love to talk about it. I used a 17 second clip that you are claiming that's like 0.7% of the original 43 minute show that I took the clip from. I really only included it for a reminder for people who watch the show to know what I was talking about. This is not a replacement for the original content. That happened around Christmas time. If you remember, the second episode came out the week before Christmas. And so I imagine it took a 
little bit of time, but they had allegedly 30 days to respond to it, which is weird because typically when they've claimed my stuff in the past, they've only had seven days to respond to it. So I don't know what was different this time, but they had 30 days to respond. After Christmas passed, they did respond and they said that they still stood by their claim on my video. And I was kind of shocked because every other time I've ever appealed their decision or their claim, they've always come back and been like, oh, you're right, that is fair use, we're releasing the claim. So then YouTube is like, you can dispute the rejection of your appeal. And I had to answer more questions. And they said that if TLC, Discovery, whoever, whatever, essentially decided that they still felt like they had a claim on my content, that then my channel could get a strike and that the video would be removed. When I read all of that, I was like, well, I'm still gonna push through and dispute this because I think it's nonsense. <laughs> but when I read all of that, I was like, I also don't wanna go make another video about the 1,000 Pound Sisters and then have TLC claim that one too, you know? Like, I was like, if it results, cause you can get th up to three strikes, right? So I didn't wanna add another opportunity potentially for them to give me a strike if I got a strike in this other situation that I was trying to resolve. So then they had seven days to respond to my dispute of their rejection of my appeal. Okay, are you following? So they now had seven days to, to go with that. And they waited the whole seven days, did not respond to my dispute, and maybe just wait there and copyright purgatory for them to do nothing. And so now the claim was dropped because they didn't do anything on their end and I wasted a whole bunch of time on my end. Honestly, the other part of like why I didn't even wanna cover <laughs> anything is because I'm honestly just really frustrated. I think y'all know that I have really shown a lot of love for this television show. I've shown a lot of love for Tammy and Amy and their family. And I've gotten a lot of people interested in the show that might not have been interested otherwise. And so it's just frustrating that TLC and or Discovery really maybe like jump through some hoops and wait around for a response that they never ended up giving. And I don't know, maybe that frustration was selfish on my end. Maybe I should have still pushed forward and made a video anyways. Although I was genuinely also concerned about getting another claim or strike or something while I was trying to dispute that one. And so, yeah, that's that's why. So thanks for your patience. Thanks for waiting. I, I am still invested in what's happening with the girls, okay? I still want to cover it as of right now. We'll see if they try to strike something on this episode, on this video. Although I will say, I'm, I think I'm going to include far less clips, mostly because I'm covering two episodes. But also, I just want to try, try it out a little bit where I don't include as many clips and see how y'all feel about it and if you still like it and you still enjoy my content and <laughs> we'll just kind of go from there okay so feel free to give me feedback let me know what your thoughts are uh, and we'll just kind of play it by ear as we go on for the rest of the season we'll see what happens and I'll also try to be more communicative in the future about you know what my intentions are when it comes to covering it especially if there's more claims or things like that so let's jump into episode three which I will say I didn't watch Watch with as much detail as I normally do, which was kind of a nice change, if I'm gonna be honest. It was kind of nice to just sit there and watch and not pause and take notes and then unpause, watch, pause, take notes, pause, whoever, whatever. It was nice to just mostly sit there and watch the show. I mean, I did take some notes just so I would remember what happened in the, in the episode, but it's not nearly as thorough. I normally, after I get to watching an episode, I feel like I normally have two to three pages and all of episode three fits on one page of a Google Doc, <laughs> all right? So we don't, we don't have as much going on for episode three, although I do do have some things I want to show you specifically from the episode. So the episode picks up where the fight left off in the episode before, right? If you don't remember, we were at Amy and Michael's house and all Misty and Amanda and Tammy wanted to do was take old Amy Slayton 
to the Costco and do some shopping, which like work. Love the Costco. I don't have a Costco card, but I literally was just in a group chat <laughs> with some friends that do have a Costco card. And we talked about how it might just be fun adult things to do <laughs> to go on a, a friend outing to the Costco together. But anyways, they're fighting over it all. And Tammy is like, I've had enough. I'm, I'm fucking sick of this. I'm just calling the police. The police come. And of course, when the police police come, then Michael's ready to change his tune. Then all of a sudden it's, I wasn't keeping her from going anywhere. She's welcome to go there. I wasn't keeping her cards from her. Amy even says like, Michael saw the cops and like handed me my cards. <laughs> like how convenient, right? Like how convenient now you're gonna, you're gonna bring this cards out and give them to me so I can go shopping with my family. It's just like, he, Michael is so full of shit. <laughs> He's so full of shit. Old Sala would be interested in him, I'm sure because he is that full of shit, okay? An important thing to note during this little moment situation type of deal is that Missy and Amanda are so stressed out that they have to smoke. It's an important plot point for later on in the episode. So just know they took a smoke break. They had some cigarettes together, whoever, whatever. And what's most important is that Amy ends up leaving. She takes the kids and she leaves his ass at home. And and this is the, the most perfect shot ever. The way that this scene of this episode ends. It's just mm, chef's kiss. <laughs> chef's fucking kiss. He was just sitting there looking all sad and alone by himself and I just had to laugh. I let out a good hearty chuckle because fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that. And I mean that, Michael Alterman. So we find out that the, the plan for Amy and her kids is to move in with Tammy, which honestly, they haven't lived together in a while, but I think they did at the beginning of this show. Like, Tammy was living with them for a while, so... It's like they have a whole like little juxtaposition of like how Amy used to be the one taking care of Tammy all the time and now that's shifted to Tammy helping take care of Amy, taking her in, helping with the boys, this, that, the other, which I think is really sweet and I really do appreciate the like level of I've got your back that this family has for one another. I do think there's probably some stuff to unpack with that and we'll, we'll get to that as we talk here today, all right? But I do really appreciate that, that they are all willing to have each other's back, that they show up for one another when they need each other. Um, I do appreciate that. Did I say that I appreciated it? I appreciate that. And honestly, over these two episodes, Tammy is just talking a whole lot of sense, which is something I don't know that I thought I'd ever say or that you probably ever predicted that I would say, but she's talking a lot of sense to Amy. She like fully is like, Amy, you've been brainwashed by this man. Like you're sitting here questioning if you're doing the right thing and you know, if the, if this is what's best for the boys and this, that, the other, but this man was brainwashing you. And even when Amy's like, okay, but the boys deserve better. Tammy is like, hold up a second. Of course they do. Of course they do. But Tammy's like, girl, you know what? You deserve better. Which like, love that. Love to hear that. I think, I think moms need to hear that. You know, I think moms are constantly putting their kids first, which like I understand, but oftentimes they need to hear like, you deserve good too. You deserve the best too. And Tammy just in general is doing a good job of stepping up as a sister now that she's able to. And I, I love, I love when like Amy's like talking about how she feels like she doesn't have support and Tammy's like, bitch, what about me? You're not doing this on your own. Bitch, where the f am I? I'm right here by your side. And I really also appreciate that she steps in as she's able to, to help take care of Amy's kids during this time. She's like totally ready to be the baby daddy. It's gonna be hard being Bob and dad, but hell, I've been doing this since the day they were born. I'll be the baby daddy. I'll be the baby daddy. <laughs> we get to see Chris and Tammy go do a checkup with old Dr. Smith. Um, if you recall, I think one of Chris's storylines is that he wants skin surgery or something. And Tammy just hasn't seen Dr. Smith since she actually had the surgery, which was six months prior to them going to this appointment. And somehow Dr. Smith like doesn't know about Caleb, doesn't know that Caleb existed, which I feel like was just for the TV. 
<laughs> I feel like that's just for the episode because old Dr. Smith is out. I follow him just for the record on Instagram and he's always out here posting about things that happened on the show. And I know, I know that this was, well, it, I guess it's maybe possible the wedding episode hadn't aired by this time, but I do know that they were filming this season while the last season was airing because I remember talking to Amy when she split from from Michael and she was telling me that like the courts were using some of the like episodes and how Michael was acting and stuff like that like in their little custody battle and their divorce hearings and things like that. So I guess it's maybe possible Dr. Smith didn't know that Tammy got married to Caleb but I feel like it probably wasn't really truly a surprise to him but he acted very surprised at the very least. And we're mostly bringing this up in this episode at this appointment because they're trying to get old Caleb in on the, the Slayton family discount <laughs> with the Dr. Smith to get the weight loss surgery. When Tammy weighs in, she is 420 blaze it pounds. Okay, 420 blaze it, you know. <laughs> 420. <laughs> YOLO. Blaze it. So that means that she's lost over 100 pounds since she had her surgery. And when Chris weighs in, he is 300 pounds. And he's basically, it sounds like he's been plateauing, not really losing anything, so he still needs to lose the 50 pounds that Dr. Smith suggested before they can have a conversation about skin surgery. So another plot point in a, a post Amy and Michael world is that Amy is moving towards wanting to get a divorce and they're a little bit concerned about the money in the bank accounts. I mean, we already know Michael has been very controlling, like was holding onto her cards so she couldn't use them. And we also know that old Amy um, is the primary breadwinner because the show is hers, okay? <laughs> she's, she's the one, she's the one that's starring in the reality show, not old Michael Halterman. And so they're, her and Amanda are like, well, we gotta go get that money. We gotta go get that money and move it to a different bank account. They do leave him money. I think they say that they leave him all of like a thousand dollars in an account so that he can use it. But they're basically like, this is Amy's money. We need to go, we need to go move that to another account, which I don't even really know how that works in like divorce situation types of deals. But I do understand why they were concerned and why they wanted to do it. Amy talks about feeling like she's been trapped in a box. I just feel trapped. I feel like I'm in a box. I feel like I'm a mom. Fine. Fine. You know, trapped in a box, mine. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, we but I understand where you're going. <laughs> and I just, her metaphors, I'm like, I guess I see where you're going, girl. I think even Amanda said that. She's like, I don't. I don't think that's right, but I, I see what you're trying to say, and, and I was on the same page. So remember when I brought up that Amy and Misty had the cigarettes the day of the big old fight with, with Michael and whoever, whatever? That plot point is still here, and I think honestly, truly, <laughs> like, I feel like they said, we need some storylines. We need, we need something to have them do. So remember that one time they smoked? Well, they gotta go to the gym and sweat out that nicotine so that they can get approved for surgery with Dr. Smith. So Amanda, Misty, Tammy, Chris, they all go over to the old, whatchamacallit, the gym. <laughs> they go to the gym and they put on these giant black trash bags to sweat out all of their nicotine and all of their weight and whoever, whatever, because I guess I guess that's a thing that people do in like high school when they're wrestlers and they're trying to drop a weight class or something. I'm really truly curious where they got those <laughs> those industrial sized trash bags because those things were huge. I will say the trainer that they were working with, I think his name was Grant, he was kind of a cutie. He was, I would like to go work out with him. Grant, you can show me a thing or two if you want. <laughs> I'll come down to Kentucky and we can do a little workout. We can do a little workout, you know what I'm saying? And because, because my channel is what it is and I just attract the pee pee poo poo shitting pissing and farting content, <laughs> I gotta let you know there wasn't a lot of it. There wasn't a ton of it in this episode or really the other episode either to be honest with you. But I will say Tammy does talk about farting in the trash bags. I was just really waiting for one of them to bend over and fart. <laughs> I would have died. <laughs> oh, I ain't taking that trash out. I feel like a pile of dirty diapers on a hot Sunday morning. 
And the episode kind of concludes with, like, Caleb and Tammy drama. So Caleb does have an appointment with Dr. Smith over, like, Zoom. And we find out that he's 537.6 pounds, which is about 37 more pounds than he weighed when... Tammy left the rehab facility, meaning he's gained weight since Tammy left. I did think it was interesting because I don't know really what they're teaching these people at the rehab facility. I have a lot of questions about how like this rehab facility is ran and why more people aren't being successful and things like that because he fully was talking about well I skip, I've been skipping breakfast I should have been losing weight and it's like that is not... <laughs> not how it necessarily works. Like, what are they teaching you there? Like, what are you doing with your time in rehab? How are you overeating in rehab? I don't necessarily know or understand it. Like, if the point of this rehab facility is to help people with this problem, which it seems to be since most of the people that they show in this rehab facility are all people who are, like, extremely overweight, morbidly obese, and I, I'm just like, what are y'all doing there? How, like, what is going on in there? He also gets the bad news that even with weight loss surgery, he'll probably continue to need to use the trach for a while after the surgery, and he'll also have to continue to stay in the rehab facility for probably up to six months after he gets surgery done. Which I think is disappointing to him because it seems like his major motivating factor for even getting better period is so that he can go live with Tammy in real life and not have this long distance relationship where he's at the rehab facility. We also start to get some hints that Amy and Tammy are struggling to live together. They they talk about it a lot. I don't know that they show it a lot. Outside of, I think it's clear that Tammy's just like a literal, little overwhelmed having like two kids in her house and it's changing her sleeping schedule because, you know, kids are unpredictable and things like that. So Tammy's stressed out about that and she's also stressed out about not living with Caleb and she does have a little FaceTime call with Caleb to talk about his appointment with Dr. Smith and also what she's experiencing. And it's clear Tammy is feeling a lot of like responsibility for Caleb's behaviors and also feeling really sad that like he's not getting better and also feeling sad that he's not with her. It's like she's taking on a lot of like responsibility for something that, in my opinion, is out of her control. Like she ultimately can't make him do anything. And she of all people, I think, should probably know that considering, you know, how often people wanted her to do things for her health and she never really did it. Um, and I think she's now on the other side of that, like feeling responsible that he's not doing anything to take control of his life and feeling like it's her fault. It's also really clear that she's feeling a lot of pressure from, I don't know, I think it might be an internal pressure on her end, but she's feeling a lot of pressure of being there for everybody. Being there and being responsible for everybody's happiness, like helping Amy, helping Amy's kids, making sure that Caleb's doing well, being like a person who's providing for everybody in the family. And this is what I wanted to get back to, which is in my whole entire five seasons of watching this show now, that is one thing that all of these people do. It's like they are really good at being there for one another, but they're awful at prioritizing themselves and they're always ready to try to help somebody else, try to, uh, you know, get somebody else the help they need and they're very bad at helping themselves and, and focusing on themselves and prioritizing themselves. So I feel, I feel like she's put this insane amount of pressure on herself because in general, their family is one where like, it is so important to help the other people before you help yourself first. And that's not just Tammy. We've seen Amy do that. I think that's also like why Amy's in the place that she's at right now. Cause she's been, like doing this for years where she's been trying to just please everybody and, and prioritize everybody else before herself. I think we see a little bits of that with like Amanda and Chris as well, except that they just don't have as much drama with it all. And so I think, I think it's, I think it's a, a problem that everybody in this family could really work through with like some good therapy and things like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's pretty much it for episode three. And that brings us to episode four, which aired this week and gets us caught the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> so episode four starts 
out with the whole family, and by the whole family, I mean just the siblings. Mama Slayton, nowhere to be seen. <laughs> but the siblings all going out to brunch together because Amanda and Misty have some big news, okay? They have some big news. And the big news is that they're gonna, they're getting surgery. And I just, here's, here's one little qualm I have with this show this season is how little we've actually seen about Amanda and Misty's story of needing weight loss surgery and how little it's been featured. And also, like, the only thing we've known about their journey prior to them getting surgery in this episode, okay? <laughs> like, out of nowhere, they're just getting surgery. The only thing we've really truly seen is that they needed to pass, like, a nicotine test and, like, stop smoking. That's that's it. That's all we all we've seen of their journey. They didn't have any other expectations. They didn't have to drop any weight like the other girlies. They didn't have to do shit. My guess is that the show probably did actually intend on showing more of Amanda and Misty's journey and did not anticipate the the real life event of Amy and Michael separating and getting a divorce. They I'm sure the show didn't anticipate that that would happen. And because that happened, I feel feel like they ended up having to cut out a lot of Amanda and Misty's stuff. This is my hypothesis. I don't I don't have any any extra information about this. This is just what I'm I'm guessing happened. But obviously the the more dramatic and probably view getting event is Amy and Michael's separation and so they they've spent more time focusing on that instead of what's going on with Misty and Amanda's weight because like I don't know honestly that people are that invested in Misty I know a lot of people love Amanda and and really enjoy her presence on the show but I mean when you're comparing the two of them getting weight loss surgery to like the, the crazy stuff that is happening in Amy's life like obviously the show is going to go towards what's happening in Amy's life. But yeah, the show has this this little last supper of the, the family all being fat together. That's their words, not mine, okay? And Misty gets the biggest fucking piece of cow meat that I have ever seen. And I just think it's kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of over this trope that they show in these shows of these people having like one last hurrah but it also, like, I don't even know if it's a trope, really, because I think that that is, like, realistic of things that happen to people who are struggling with their weight. They are always thinking, like, I'm just gonna have one last hurrah before I officially start my diet tomorrow, right? And so I just, I just wish some of these shows would stop making that to be, like, the norm because it doesn't have to be like that. Like, <laughs> when you're getting ready to have weight loss surgery, when you're getting ready to start, like, a new diet plan, lifestyle, whatever you want to call it, like, you don't have to have one last hurrah. Um, there is a an important conversation about having no, no ass at all syndrome. Bitch, you got no ass at all syndrome. You almost got no ass at all. <laughs> you kind of look like you be, uh, got old man syndrome. Whatever they had in their ass moves around to the front of their belly. <laughs> and I appreciate them bringing awareness to this issue because it's something I suffer from. I will say, I think they brought this up on the show before, though. I think that's an old joke, which is something that I'm noticing a lot during this season because during this little scene too, they also make a joke about getting a family discount. And I'm like, y'all have joked about that before. Y'all joked about it with Chris. Now you're joking about it with Misty and Amanda. Like, it's been done. It's been done. And they're repeating some jokes. And I'm, I'm sure most people are just like, they don't know, they don't notice. But I notice, okay? I'm watching. They also, during this little brunch situation, have the standard death could happen and surgery conversation. If I'm going to be honest with you all, I feel a little bit numb to that conversation at this point because between 1,000 pound sisters, 1,000 pound best friends, my 600 pound life, like all the shows like this that I've watched in the history of my consumption of reality TV, they're always having this conversation. And most of the time, everybody's fine. I think there probably have been some complications, I think, on my 600 pound life. But 
usually everybody's okay. And I'm just a little bit numb to it, but obviously going through a surgery, any kind of surgery has its risks. So I understand why they're sharing that information and also why the family would be concerned. I think I'm just numb to it because I'm just like, I, I know that everybody's going to make it out okay because... Well, I, I, I see old Amanda on the TikTok live all the time, so I know she's just fine. I know she's good. I will say, though, this is this is a, a moment where Amy just, like, breaks down in tears, and she does that, like, so often during this season. She's just been crying a lot, and I feel for her. I can tell she actually is really going through it when they're filming this. And that was triggered by this conversation about something potentially happening to Amanda or Misty. There's also a moment when they're all leaving the restaurant, which by the way, the reason that Amy and Tammy are leaving after everybody else is because they have to pee. So I think that's important that we bring up because there's limited pee pee poo poo content in these two episodes. As if I haven't gotten enough from the Foodie Beauty channel lately. And Amy is pushing Tammy in her wheelchair out of the restaurant and they are struggling. And Amy specifically is struggling to do it. And because she can't see very well and because she's just one person, she accidentally goes over some like loose bricks and Tammy loses it. You can't cut through here. Okay. Now the people watching. Cause people don't care. Oh, okay. <gasps> Amy wasn't really paying attention. And I about flipped out of my chair. You know I'm being safe. Now you're about to start crying, as usual. I'm not crying. I honestly was like, oh my God, this is a little bit of classic Tammy coming out, getting all riled up about this, like losing her shit on Amy. Cause this is the, this is the kind of stuff Tammy was doing before season four, the first three seasons of this show, that people would get so mad at Tammy and then they would get so mad at me for allegedly defending Tammy for it. And I just want to say, I understand where Tammy is coming from, but I also think it's like, girl, give your sister a break. She's clearly emotional. You know she can't see. You know she's she's nearly blind. Like, she probably didn't see the bricks. Just give her a break, you know? And of course they, like, work it out and they're fine. And then for whatever reason, they just start calling each other names for fun. Bitch. Skank. Guzzler. You hot. You slip puppy. <laughs> yeah. You're just so What the I have no comeback. She lost. I outwitted her. So the rest of the episode plays out where they go back and forth between Misty and Amanda getting surgery and then the shenanigans that Tammy and Amy are in at home not with them. So I'm just gonna real quick get the Misty and Amanda stuff out of the way because it's the least interesting stuff. Can you believe the least interesting stuff in this episode is Misty and Amanda having like major surgery to make weight loss happen. And they go to see Dr. Smith for surgery on the same day. Chris drives them there to do it. Misty's first and Misty is contemplating something before her surgery. Contemplating. You caught you taking on some macaroni. So Amanda goes in for surgery and basically the the story you need to know is that Amanda's very concerned about Misty and can't like make herself not anxious before her own surgery because she's worried about what's going on with Misty. Chris isn't really doing anything to help that situation because he's just he's just irritating Amanda or something like that. I don't know, honestly. <laughs> The, the Misty and Amanda scenes getting surgery. I was like, yeah, they got surgery. Like, everybody's fine. There was a lot of worrying, which, like, I get. I understand. They're all good. <laughs> they're, they're all fine. That's that's what you need to know about their surgery. Well, there is that one. The one other thing is they were waiting for Dr. Smith to come in and give them the okay to go home after their surgery. And Amanda was sitting there, and she was talking about how she wanted to just let Dr. Smith know about himself, but how it would be ethnically against the rules to do so. You know, even though I'm single, you know, I think it probably crossed some kind of lines if I were to be a doctor-patient thing. We wouldn't be able to do that. 
He'd get in trouble. Eth ethnically, I think that's against his rules. I do agree, though. Dr. Smith is a cutie. I've said that about Dr. Smith and Dr. Proctor. I think they are, are men of a certain age, and they're very attractive, and they, they could both. They could both. They, they could both, you know? So the goofing that happens with Amy and Tammy while while their siblings are away is the more interesting stuff that goes on in this episode. And again, Tammy has established herself as being a, a very grounded support for Amy. Um, she has like fully said like, I'm, I'm here to co-parent your kids with you. Like I'm gonna do as much as I can with like the level of mobility that I have at the time. And I also appreciate that Tammy's like, you're living in my house now, and in my house you're gonna care about yourself. In my house you're gonna take care of yourself, you're gonna be kind to yourself, you're you're gonna do it. That's the rules. That's I'm I'm Queen Tammy, and them's the rules. But even so, Amy feels really bad because she feels like she's put Tammy in a position where Tammy should be focusing on herself and her own experience of living alone for the first time and also working on her relationship with Caleb. And so Amy just feels really bad that she's put her in that position, which I also understand, but I think like Amy herself is in a tough position and I think it's okay that they're they're leaning on each other as support right now. So Tammy plans some things for them to do together while the siblings are out of town. They want to get their mind off of of Amanda and Misty's surgery and Tammy specifically wants to get her mind off of of Caleb, and so the first thing they do is go out to a sushi restaurant at the request of Miss Tammy. And wouldn't you know it, Tammy doesn't even care for fish. Tammy doesn't like fish. And it's wild to me that she would suggest going there, but that also feels very me coded. <laughs> like, I have definitely suggested, like, let's get sushi, because there are non seafood sushi rolls. And I also do like some of the seafood in, in sushi rolls. But I'm just very selective and I don't love it all. The other very me coded thing about Tammy's experience at the sushi restaurant is ordering the boat. <laughs> because we have a sushi restaurant we like to go to and you can get unlimited sushi and if you order enough of it, they bring it out on a boat. And so I'm always sitting there like, I want the boat. We need to order enough sushi to get the boat. We need the boat. So I really was resonating with Tammy in this situation type of deal. So the girls order some quail eggs, something else that came out on fire, and I'm sure some other stuff that they didn't really address. But the, the big thing that happens during this scene is that they do have both the kids with them. They have Gage and Glenn there. And Gage is just being a toddler, doing toddler things, being picky about what he wants to eat, not wanting to eat everything, uh, screaming, crying, being a kid, running around. And honestly, I mean, that's a big reason why I don't have kids, so I can't, I can't really relate to, to what Amy's going through. I imagine it's really annoying. Um, and frustrating and and difficult to deal with when your kid's acting up in public. It's why I try to grant some grace to, to parents whenever I whenever their kids are acting up in public, but it's also very much why I don't want kids. And if I ever did have kids, I'm not taking them to a restaurant. I'm, I will stop going to restaurants before I take my toddler to a restaurant, but also hypothetical, things that I'm never gonna have to experience because I'm not gonna have kids in that way. Eventually, the niece and nephew that brought them to the restaurant come and get the the kids and Amy's generally embarrassed because she feels like there was a whole scene and she's crying and she feels like people are looking at her which I totally get and totally understand but before they actually leave they do eat the quail eggs it kind of looked like a shot they were in like martini glasses and they went like this I don't I don't know what that's all about but Amy did say that it was the worst thing that's ever been in her mouth which I do feel like does in fact say a lot because I I'd imagine Michael may or may not have been worse you know one other thing that Amy says during this is that she's concerned about the boys missing Michael 
And I think that that's a legitimate concern as a mother, but I also just wanted to be like, girl, that's why visitation exists. <laughs> that's that's why things like shared custody exist. Like you don't you don't have to go back to that man for that man to be involved in your your kid's life if he wants to be, you know? Like that you do not need to take this man back for that. Like we could figure something out so that those kids can see their father. The other thing that Tammy planned for the girlies to do was go to a rage room where they were just going to break a bunch of shit to let off steam. And it's also just so wild to me that people will pay for an experience like that, but they won't just fucking pay for therapy. Although, I don't, I mean, like, I don't know that you necessarily only go there because you need to let off steam or let your demons out or whatever. Uh, but it does kind of seem like that's what old Amy and Tammy are doing here. And I don't know, maybe both the girlies are actively involved in therapy. They don't have a great track record with it on the show, but also I feel like Tammy's at a point where she, like, doesn't want that to be shown on the show. And so, I don't know. I hope they're going to therapy because they both seem like they could really benefit from it. Particularly Amy, who doesn't seem to have a great control of her emotions this season. But they do, they do start beating some shit up in this room. They're just breaking shit. And I did laugh when Amy beat up the computer monitor and she was like, you play your damn video games, Michael. You, you Michael. Your damn video games. But again, Amy just starts crying out of nowhere, and this is like the third time in the episode. Tammy also shares during this part that she feels like things got worse for everybody in the family while she was gone in rehab and wasn't in the same city as them and wasn't around them for the, the year or so that she was in rehab. And she feels bad because she feels like she should have been there for Amy during that time. Amy does reassure Tammy, like, girl, you're you're doing enough. You are doing so much for me. I really appreciate it. Like, you're doing great. But I guess what I do want to say, I mean, I know I just got done talking about, like, how they could probably both benefit from therapy. I, I'm actually not entirely convinced that Tammy hasn't been in therapy and working through stuff because what I will say about Tammy is that she has made, like, noticeable improvements in how she communicates her feelings. I mean, if you compared this Tammy and this scene to Tammy in season one, she is able to really articulate, like, all of the things that she's stressed about, right? She's like, she's like, I feel bad because I feel like I should be doing more for you. I feel like I, I let you down by not being here for the past year or so. Like, she does such a good job of sharing what's on her mind in a way that I don't think we've ever seen Tammy do before. And, you know, to Amy's credit, I also think she's doing better at that as well. But I think that, like, she's just, like, not in a great mental health space, in my opinion, just from watching now four episodes of this season. It seems like she doesn't have a great control of her emotions. And that that's not her fault. I think she just needs some help and, like, processing and managing, like, the major life changes that are going on for her this season. But it's refreshing to see them actually talk about their feelings, Tammy in particular, because in the past, I think that is why she would rage, is because she would just not want to talk about what was bothering her, what was upsetting her. And so being able to see her communicate that, like, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pressed because I want to be a good sister to you, and I also have this marriage that's long distance, and uh, I love, I love my nephews, but also it's really really hard helping you take care of them because I'm not getting my normal amount of sleep and things like that. Like, that is such growth for Tammy. That is such growth for her. I mean, I know we got to see a little bit of classic Tammy where she got really mad at, at Amy in this episode, but overall, like, she has clearly grown not just, like, in terms of her physical health, but she has clearly worked on something behind the scenes when it comes to expressing her feelings and processing her feelings. And then the final moment of this episode is Amy leaving her lawyer's office and basically sharing she's really upset because Michael beat her to the punch. He filed for divorce before she got a chance to file for divorce from him. And I think she's having some like conflicted feelings because, you know, we've seen her wavering back and forth in these two episodes that I covered today about if she even really wanted to divorce him, if she wanted to, you know, try to work things out with him, try to make things work for the kids. 
And so I think she was, like, frustrated because she clearly was taking time to consider if she wanted to work on it. And I think her interpretation of Michael beating her to the punch is that he didn't take the same kind of time to decide if he wanted to try to fight for their marriage or fight for the relationship. So we'll see how that plays out uh, in next week's episode. It looks like Tammy will also be going to visit Caleb in person in next week's episode. Uh, so we, we got some stuff to look forward to. You know, it's never a dull moment on the 1,000 Pound Sisters. That's for sure. Anyways, that's all I have time for today. Thanks so much for your patience and, and waiting for me to cover all of this. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're brand new to my channel, consider subscribing down below. Hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post. I do have an entire 1,000 Pound Sisters playlist of every episode I've ever recapped on the show. Make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow me on all my social media. I love you all so much, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!